Well, first of all, again, thank you. Off camera, I already told you, John, that I'm a big fan. So thank you so much for doing the interview, man. Uh, big, big fan of Warbringer. So it's uh, my brother when I told him I'm interviewing John from Warbringer. He's like, what the fuck? For real? We got really excited. Uh, that's cool. Well, here I am outside my apartment in Los Angeles having some coffee in the morning, sitting in the garden. Uh, good, to, good to be here. Uh, it's nice to be talking about the band again, be asked questions about Warbringer. It's cool that the, the wheels are firing up and uh, the band's going back into a full active mode. Yes. And you know what it is? You guys were part of that wave in 2000s, right? That revival of thrash. Like Evil, Vector, Toxic Holocaust, like Power Trip, some of the favorite bands I had along with you guys. So what I wanted to kind of ask you, as one of the bands that was at the front lines at the time, you know, you were bringing the more modern variation of thrash metal at the time. What do you think is so special about the genre that was worth propagating it and reviving it in that, that kind of way? Um, so I remember basically getting into metal and having the idea like, what the fuck happened to riffs and songs? You know, <laughs> I mean, it, it was either like in the local area we were, it was kind of a, when the band was starting, it was around the height of, uh, you know, like uh, the local heavy music scene was pretty much 100% metalcore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, and and uh, then even within the metal scene, there was a lot of like symphonic this or like technical brutal that and everything was like Pro Tools to hell. Uh <laughs> That particular, the early mid 2000s, things were like almost, it was that like ubiquitous. And that's all there was. And I was like, what about these fucking 80s records nobody's talking about? <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. I, off the internet. So to me, it didn't matter if the record came out in 2004 or 1988 or whatever. It's just like, is it good? Does it have riffs? Does it make me want to headbang? And I was like, old metal is generally cooler. You know, that, that was my, I still think. Uh, you know, th there's plenty of great new bands. The torch needs to continue, but like, I don't know. I just liked straight metal. Metal. I didn't want avant garde breaking the boundaries of the metal genre. I just want some fucking good metal. You know, uh, I want to bang my head in rage, and I want that sense of just pure adrenaline. And I don't think that that has to. Be, and I think that you can do that excellently still. I think that you don't have to, as a, a new artist, be like, oh, well, I'm going to try to like be half metal and leave the genre to somehow put my own unique stamp on it. It's like, you can just write like really good distinctive songs. And that's actually like, I think working in and with sort of an existing mold. Cause let's face it, heavy metal's 50 years old, thrash yeah. is like five, 40 years old, something like that, depending on what you call the first thrash record. Um, and it's like, Jesus Christ. Uh, so it, it is a real daunting challenge when you think about that. Oh, you know, if you're going to start a new thrash metal band, it's like, can you fuck with Rust in Peace? Yeah, no. yeah of course, of back. course. <laughs> but, uh, so ultimately, it's like that's a but, but it's like if you're not going to try to do that, then just shrug and be like, oh, I guess all the best metal's already been made. You know, yeah, so, don't don't even try. Right. So fuck yeah. that. <laughs> and uh, I think the whole band's career has been, well, let's try to sh take a real shot at doing something that can hang with, uh, you know, in our mind, the, our favorite records. And I think the whole band's career has been trying to do that pretty much. And it's up to others to say how successful we are. I'm happy with the last two. I'll put it out. <laughs> last two. Uh, I like those about as much as I like any other metal record. I'm, I'm happy to say that. And you, you know, you said something, I thought I was the only one who would say these things along with my older brother, is riff heavy. That's why I love thrash metal so much. It's riff heavy, it's always changing, it's pulse pounding, like you said, adrenaline fueled. And I, I unfortunately, in some ways, I think thrash has become almost like a dying genre, a dying breed. There's so far few new thrash battle bands, let's say this year, that have come out in comparison to like some of the crazy other genres that you've said. And okay. I would say... And I would say uh, nothing sounds, to me, nothing sounds like heavy, like a thrash metal, like a good thrash metal record. And I wanted to ask you, even, you know, with all the lineup changes you guys had, all the difficulties Warbringer has kind of experienced, what keeps you personally motivated to keep going in this direction? Like, we love Warbringer, we love what we're doing with Warbringer, and we want to keep going in this direction. It, I think just basically uh, a little bit of goddamn stubbornness, and then... <laughs> from that like just pride in what we've done um 
if no, but you know, I, I like to think that, uh, you know, we kind of always imagine ourselves a bit as like, you know, spitting into the wind. Fuck you. We are old school thrash metal in the 2000s. And so what if you say that's that's a dead genre or whatever? Fuck you. It rules. And you're stupid if you think that. That's what I think. <laughs> oh, I, I love that. <laughs> if you don't like riffs, why the fuck would I listen to anything you sang? You know, <laughs> like, who asked you like metal? You know? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. So, um. Yeah, totally. And just like the focus on the riffs and then thrash metal is a kind of a sweet spot, I think, which I think a lot of like the early death metal in particular gets to as well. Uh, I do enjoy a lot of the more extreme stuff, but mm -hmm. I really like um, especially like kind of the more brutal end of thrash to me is on that real like sweet spot where you have the sheer speed and chaos and, and like everything, you know, lots of riffs per song and then the vocalist is furious as fuck and all of that. <laughs> Um, but you still have like hooks and songs and parts where it's like, oh, and then he says cool line and the riff comes in. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. It's the, the cool factor of, of thrash metal that I think sometimes is missing a little bit in heavy metal now. Maybe, yeah, power, it, maybe power metal still has that cool factor, but like I feel a lot, a lot of bands take themselves way too seriously sometimes. Is it, well, no, we take, so the funny thing is we've gotten like more and more serious throughout the career, I think. I think like I, you know, I, I, the persona I've got is a very like, <laughs> you know, I try to talk about like real oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, You know, uh, I guess the character's kind of over the top, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, my actual feeling about sort of living in the world with the the history and the current present state that we have is that i think that's why i can feel a connection to angry riffs and stuff in the first place because i was born into all that shit um and i don't like it so uh <laughs> i think a root thing that angry metal expresses uh, that makes it a legitimate art form and not not just a teenage phase mom you know that yeah, kind of, yeah 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 like, if you have to make an actual artistic case for metal it's that you live in a world where there's a lot of shit that you if you're a basically moral person should be furiously angry about and you're supposed to act like it's all normal you know <laughs> so, yeah you, it's, it, it, i automatically remember like old school sepultura and like Slayer and what Megadeth would talk about in their songs and what you guys would talk about as well in your songs. It just right away. It's, it's, we want to talk about real shit that's happening now. I, yeah. And, and around Vanquished is where I took this turn to where there's a thing I was consciously saying to myself. I'm like, look, okay. So you want to write brutal shit. You want to write evil music. Okay. What's the most evil thing you could write about? Is it a red guy with horns? <laughs> Fuck and exist you know that's like the evil version of looney tunes as far as i'm fucking concerned you know uh venom's cool battery's cool uh, if you're doing it now it's like there is no even uh, maybe there's about to be but right now at least where i'm at there's no like evangelical order that's clamping down on me so as a form you know i i just never thought the like occultic satanic I, i'm a hardcore rationalist and i don't believe in fucking ghosts so, uh, <laughs> i'm like cartoon character you know what you know uh, so satan probably isn't real but like <laughs> fucking you know the likes of say uh you know uh, the british empire or the german empire or hitler or, or fucking you know any army or weapon of de mass death that you care to make, that all is objectively real and you can't say it's not so exactly. i kind of think you know look at people just look at people and and, and i do it from the mass power angle because i also think you know what's more brutal like a serial killer or like the purges of stalin or whatever you know uh you got guys in the world right now who can get more done than jeffrey dahmer or whatever did in his whole career with the stroke of a pen that's brutal you know yeah, so yeah, I yeah. Always, you know the, the big picture power angle of, to just evil and brutality because that's the most powerful force there is in the world and uh it's right in line with the thrash metal tradition because thrash metal traditionally as you pointed out uh you know 80s thrash metal tended to talk about well just you know brutal violence in general you know killing posers <laughs> like unbonded by blood um <laughs> but not uncommon at all to see like war the environment uh political corruption and greed those are like the stock and trade themes of thrash metal and yeah. i think one of the for a newer generation to look back at that genre or just like old punk or any of that stuff uh, is because 
more or less looking back, it's like, those guys were right. Those are the concerns in the world. Uh, those are legitimate topics to be angry about. So when you hear that stuff, it's, it, it, it comes off more real, I think. It's not like cheap. It's not novelty. There, there's bands and stuff today whose career is like taking a meme and making their band out of it and riding with it. And like, that could never be as good. Just, you know, you're going to top out at like maybe an eight out of 10 doing that. If you go for real shape, you can make it all the way to 10 potentially. And, you know, I got to say, though, you mentioned the last two albums and kind of how happy you are with them. And I have again, like I said, I've been following everything that's been going on with uh, Warbringer. And I'm so glad that you guys what seems to me like and you could correct me if I'm wrong. This is this momentum right now for Warbringer. And especially with the last two albums, you guys have just been doing killer fucking work. And it's just like a train now just like running forward. Yeah, that, that's what we're trying to do if it looks like that from where you're at we're doing good uh, <laughs> there's challenges to make this stuff but basically i wouldn't change hardly a damn thing on the last two records when i look at the first four there I, I can't say that um i think that I, i'm still proud of all our work and i think it all leads to where it is but the last two i'm like those are pretty much like the best this whole warbringer concept could be at least in my opinion i'm really happy with myself as a vocalist and lyricist i love what the band has done i love all what all the players have brought to the table we have the most stable lineup we've ever had too because mm -hmm. San sanchez uh the vanquish lineup is from 2016 is still around which is the longest we've held a lineup mm -hmm. uh, me, Carlos, and Adam, who have all, Adam and I were at the start, and then Carlos, since World's Torn Asunder, we're kind of the real, like, writing nucleus of the band right now. And both the Chases, Becker and Bryant, are just phenomenal players, um, the best we've had in each of their roles. So, yeah, it feels kind of like, I, I feel like this. Basically, at this point, we've been doing this so long and played so many goddamn shows that there aren't that many people in the world that have just spent as much time playing thrash metal as we have. In some cases, even the bands from the 80s have like played less shows than Warbringer in their career, you know, because they haven't been active as consistently or they never did crazy shit, like play 250 shows in 2008 and 300 in 2000. <laughs> you know? And we never got... It, like Warbringer 2, I think it's only the last couple albums, and really it was only a couple of years after Vanquish that I think the perception changed from like they're one of the new wave thrashmen that you might hear about to like, oh, Warbringer, they're kind of, uh, we try to, we like to see ourselves as like a cut above, we, at least. So that's, uh, that's how we, <laughs> but we really try to be, you know, and we've taken it super seriously. Uh, the band in the live show, we don't fuck around. We're all like, you, you go there beforehand, you'll see us like pounding water, doing warm up stretch, <laughs> you know, we're like just everybody's a stone cold professional right now. And we're all, you know, we're all like basically still broken paying rent too. So like none of us ever made it doing this. And I think that's why we don't suck yet. I think, I think that, I think there's something to that when you're hungry and you love it so much, that you're willing to put up with all the difficulties of life and still make metal, you must love it with all your heart. So, and I, I think it came through in your music. You mentioned the last two albums is something you're very proud of. I, I'll be the fan to come out and say they're all great. I, I love from the first album to the last album. Uh, I have beautiful moments with everything. Like World Turn of Sunday, I remember when it came out, I think it must've been the only album I listened to for like three or four months in a row. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for me, I have to, I have to see a progression and improvement. So I guess from where I'm at, if I don't think I'm better now than I was at War Without End and the band is, then I should hang it up. But yeah, we yeah. could be where we are without all of that. And like War Without End is a lot of fun to go back to because it, it's like the band in such a different state. Right now we're like this well-oiled that everyone knows exactly what they're doing because we've done it for a million times. Um, but then it was like just this youthful excitement and discovery and just like a love letter to like war without ends, just our love letter to old metal, you know, hey, you, you know, it. you mentioned yeah. that if I may uh, uh, interject, you said that. And you know what? I always had that feeling. You can correct me again if I'm wrong. I felt like war without end and walking into nightmares was this homage to 80s thrash metal. And then from like world torn asunder, I started seeing a lot more different influences and a lot of different things entered the band. And as the albums kind of went on, it 
it's still Warbringer, but it, it changed and evolved and kind of into something that's I think was personally different. Yeah, and, and I think what that is is basically a reaction to everybody saying your first album is a homage to old thrash metal Harrisons, and the way it was at those times, a lot of um, a lot of the new thrash movement where these are like brand new bands were getting written like as hacks and copycats because they didn't like debut with Master of Puppets or something on that level. It's like no yeah. shit they else didn't any of the great bands you know most of those took a couple records to get to their landmark you know and that was when the whole genre and like development was new and happening to go okay. back and uh, and kind of like to, to evoke that feeling of, of that whole style of metal you're not you're pro you know it was a journey for us to go from like okay we want to just first be like a good thrash metal band that you know you could see what you know what we like uh i think more of that and you could probably accurately describe as kind of like a blend of the bay area and euro style thrash with a bit more emphasis on like the speed picking like slayer creator stuff than uh some of the more melodic stuff but still some of that <laughs> as it goes on there's more and more like extreme metal influence creeping in and we always like that stuff it's not like we were ever thrash purists who like only listen to the thrash genre that's stupid other genres have thrash parts in them like it's just actually right at the middle of like where metal genres converge it's that sort of the hip between uh, traditional and extreme metal and can kind of lean into both you know a band like say testament or anthrax might have more in common with like i don't know priest or maiden or something than say like creator on pleasure to kill does or morbid sane on spectrum of death or whatever you know which have might have more and you know and some of that stuff has more in common and with like what early death and black metal would be doing so it, it's a cool and honestly too nobody says this when they're talking about thrash it's how wide the genre is yeah the same includes some real stripped down like raw mean stuff and then it goes all the way to like i don't know like watchtower or coroner or something that's really intricate and proggy and techie you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. vocal styles run the gamma from full melodic singing to like straight up like Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I even remember like back in the day, I was like, I would watch some interview and you said like, oh, we were inspired by Demolition Hammer, blah, blah, blah. And it kept going. I've always heard like Sodom, Sepultura, Sadus, you know, like all these bands that I grew up with and love in your music. And I, I agree with you. You could have easily as a band settled on death metal with your vocal style, with the aggression that the band was going in. Easily you could have done if you wanted to death metal. It just it looks like you chose to do this route, like this music that you really enjoy. Yeah, and I, I think that one of the things too is we've tried to like kind of rather the, there's a Bruce Lee quote I like. I'll, I'll go from there. Uh, he says it's, it's something you know. It's probably not a perfect quotation here, but it's something like it's not about adding to yourself; it's about subtracting strip away the inessential so i think a lot of the time we're looking at what we're doing and it looks like yeah we've added these influences, or at least as far as you guys can tell but there's like the same shit we've been listening to since forever you know we always had like i don't know our dissection storm of the lights vein alongside our rust and peace or whatever you know mm -hmm. uh you know our immortal our battery our morbid angel whatever you know all, all that stuff's like the classic metal canon as far as i'm concerned so I think we got better at like blending in basically all the stuff we already listened to and having more a wider array of our existing influences go into Warbringer. So I think that's what happened throughout the records. Also, we wanted, um, but also I think, yeah, we never really, uh, Empire's Collapse was the closest we got to like, let's do something totally different. There's a whole lot of scattershot experimentation on that one, I would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it was basically like, we want you to see us as our own entity and not simply a homage to cool old metal, you know, <laughs> but the real homage is to be our own entity. If you really want to do that right, you have to go and be your own band and, and continue, you know, actually carry forward the flag, not carry forward a replica of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a real legitimate, difficult artistic challenge. So I think just always it's been like, it, the last two records, I was so happy with the direction of them because it was like, let's not change what the band is. Let's just do what the band already was more. Refine, you know? Yeah, refine it further. And yeah, yeah, yeah.
Yeah, yeah. So it's always about that refinement. And, uh, you know, I'm still writing. I haven't changed like the whole lyrical angle of the band. I think I just do it better now. And it's less stock and it hits at a more like human psyche angle rather than just like bomb go boom, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and for um, me, it, it kind of came out of nowhere, to be honest. It's like I, I became so busy and enveloped in work. I didn't know Weapons of Tomorrow was being developed, that like, you guys were working on it. So I think I literally discovered it that like a week after it came out. I'm like, fuck, yeah. Warbringer has a new album. And I jump in. I was like, holy shit. It's like it was such a it, I think the, the best part of my listening to it was the unexpected feeling and then also being happy of what I've heard. So it was it was really cool. Like, I know you guys are starting the whole tour with Heathen and Misfire. Uh, I think it was going to be a West Coast tour, right? It sure is. West Coast mainly. I'm moving to the shade. It's getting hot out here. <laughs> um yeah so and that's kind of a milestone for the band so heathen is you know if you don't know the first two heathen records go and yeah. fix that and uh <laughs> you know yeah yeah <laughs> yeah there's quite a cool riff a lot of good riffage on there i was listening back to those again like you know that, that first main rhythm and hypnotize and i go that's such a good thrash rhythm man and they go to that they go from the half on the pickup oh man i love i love it um <laughs> Dude, so it's really cool. But it's also a milestone because this is kind of a kind of thing that's just for, for me personally a big deal. Is we got we got a classic thrash band to open for us on a tour. And yeah, it's a big deal. Actually do that now. And that's kind of crazy because uh, we did listen to those records when we started 100%, you know. Um you know, still do very worthy fucking records. Uh, you know, their latter work is pretty solid too, as far as I know. Um, so it's like it's really cool, and it's like, oh man, we've come so far. You know, <laughs> where where our place in the scene is like, where we can have some influences open for us and shit. That's cool. So that's a it's a it's a milestone for the band for sure, and for me personally, it's like we finally turned that corner to where now we're like among the ranks of thrash metal. You know, we're not the new guys anymore because war without end came out 15 years ago almost oh man it's crazy to even think about that it just hit me yeah oh dude uh empire's collapse is about to be 10 years old and that's the fourth record and that jesus christ so i'm i don't know how these guys like i don't know milla petraza or gary holt or chuck billy do it i feel ancient now fuck <laughs> <laughs> you know and i was telling you like the that first concert you did the big concert you guys did in new york back in bb king was my my first concert seeing you guys so it's like being there for the whole journey and your live performances which were always fucking aggressive i loved it i remember even sometimes i think it was an overkill concert maybe an ice earth concert when you guys opened and you were more aggressive than the main act. Main act. Like people were going oh. crazier. Yeah, well, we have to be. We just have to. Like, you, no one, if we aren't doing that, we don't have a reason to exist as a band. Let's be real. <laughs> yeah. We're just like a slightly watered down version of an existing metal act that's like played that, you know, great records uh, and all that. It's like, why exist? So we, we kind of, one of the crazy things, I think, is to really do homage to classic metal or something. You have to take your favorite records and almost like, you know, a scene in a cheesy movie where it's like you take your rival's face and you put it on the wall and you throw it at it, you, you bullseye it, and then the camera cuts or something. It's like you have to do that with, I don't know, Rust and Peace or fucking Pleasure to Kill or you name it. You know, take your favorite record. And I guess you have to be like, how can I do this better? And it's not like, that's an objective thing that can be proven but that has like if that's not the goal you don't even have a chance you yeah, know <laughs> i agree like, I like agree. all right fucking my favorite records i got you in my sights what what did you do that i like so much i'm gonna pay close attention and we're gonna try to do that even better because that's what made those records so good is they were looking at the stuff that came before them and trying to one up it in whatever their particular you know whatever band's particular angle is some went for pure speed and extremity some went for like technical prowess and songwriting you know some you know metallica went for that just sense of gigantic bigness in their records uh we look at all of that and we're like let's take notes <laughs> you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Do. And so some of the stuff we do really is kind of a fusion of a few key feelings and influences and some of the more, uh, 
I guess, left field songs on the last two records, like say When the Guns Fell Silent or Divinity of Flesh or something is kind of like where we started doing this thing. We're like, what if we took one of like the bigger, more epic Metallica songs, but it was all like Bathory flavored or something. <laughs> <laughs> they never did that. That they never did songs one the other way, but there's like you know, uh, like Guns Fell Silent. I, I feel like it's like Justice Metallica plus Bathory plus Iron Maiden or something, you know. And it's cool. That's like not at all out of uh, the classic metal canon. It's just like different than you hear from most thrash revivalist acts because like even the Metallica stuff we're talking about in that particular interest, uh, instance isn't their thrashy material, you know. Uh, it's their more epic material. And so I think that's one thing that Warbringer really did that's uh, different from the rest of the pack of thrash revivalists. And a lot of thrash in general is uh, putting the like epic songs in there. Because for me, that's like uh, just a thing about metal is, you know, oh, at the end of the record, then you get the big epic number, you know, like Maiden used to do or whatever Metallica did. Uh, a and, bunch of great and you guys, you know what you managed also because this this bands have been and existed and they've changed their direction or they've expanded and evolved and they became no longer the band you remember. You know, it's happened before, but you oh, yeah. guys, you guys stayed war bringing. You're you're still at the DNA who you are, but like you said, more. It's 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 not the same thing. And I like I said, I love all the records. I, I the first three records to me are always going to be very special. I love the new records. Uh, but it is more. It is an evolution. It is. It is you guys growing as musicians, and I totally agree with you there. Yeah. So I, I think that's, and I think just the fact that we've never like it's only really recently, like kind of after Weapons of Tomorrow came out, where I think the perception of the ba band really changed from like, like to where people see us like, okay, this is just like one of the better, best thrash metal bands that's still around making records today. Um, and I get more of that and I get, I hear less of the, oh, Warbringer, uh, you know, that's cute. I like the eighties too, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, oh yeah, I already have those records. That, that kind of thing. We used to get a lot more of that and we get a lot more of, uh, the, I think the, the catalog in the band gets more of the respect that I, I, of course, I wouldn't stay in the band if I didn't think it deserved it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I'm happy to see that turn. And I think that that's the result of, you know, like the press can write whatever the fuck it wants. Uh, I don't know how half these music journalists got their fucking job because they don't seem to know what they're talking about a lot of the time. I remember when we came out, this one still chuffs me, where they compared. Uh, so if you're going to compare us to old thrash bands, at least pick the right ones. And, you know, great band. And so but they're comparing us to Anthrax, like in terms of the vocal style. And like, I don't sound anything like Joey Belladonna. Yeah, no. yeah. Great singer, great band. Uh, not, you know, cool riffs and stuff. Not one of the prime, you know, there's a lot of different thrash bands. That's not one of the ones that we were like, oh, yeah, let's do it that particular way. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Notice the difference. And it's like, you know, if you're going to point to the thrash records that were influenced by, you better be looking at Rain and Blood, Pleasure to Kill, Epidemic of Violence, Spectrum of Death, you know, uh, Sacrifice, second and third album. Those uh. are the really ones. And like anyone who, in my view, is a real, like a astute thrash listener would pick that up, you know? And it's it's more that usually than the, the Bay Area sound with, with Exodus being the key one from there. <laughs> well, For the more like manic, speed obsessed kind of, vicious side of it uh which is fine because i like the melodic uh, the more melodic like heavy speed metal side of thrash plenty it's just not what we're good at doing you know yeah, yeah exactly i was gonna actually ask you a very deep cut question i know maybe some people are not always in the know of these kinds of things but it was about walking into nightmares it, i was sure. always curious you know, about this thing you, you guys when it came out and people listened to the album you weren't 100 percent happy with the production because you said it happened really quick, everything happened quick, and the way it sounded, like, there was something that kind of, from what I remember, that bothered you. And the funny thing to me was, I loved that sound that was in the album. I know it wasn't perhaps perfect, and maybe as an artist, you're a perfectionist. So I wanted to ask you, what was, what was it about it that, that kind of bothered you? Oh, no, the, the record where the production for me is like actually an issue is it's number four, because that mm. got... Uh, we produce, we recorded it with Steve Evitz, who also produced World's Torn Asunder. Yeah. And he picks on World's Torn Asunder. On this one, he didn't, and it got handed off to someone who kind of entered the project at the 11th hour. Ah, got it. They have any control over that. Waking into Nightmares, we did with Gary Holt, and it's like, 
you, you know, like the band and everything wasn't as tight as it is now and stuff, but we were a lot tighter than the first record. And we had Nick Ritter on drums, rest in peace, yeah. uh, crazy technical drummer. And he, I, I think Waking into Nightmares is actually a big turning point for the band because it's still, it's possibly the most relentlessly thrashing one that we've ever put out, you know. Uh, Severed a- reality. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. We're living in the whirlwind. Those, those are awesome concert moshing songs. Yeah, well, those two in particular are the ones that stay in the set for a long time. It had been in the set just like fixtures since forever. Uh, Severed Reality in particular still is in there a lot. Living into a world in a whirlwind got pushed out a bit because we wrote Remain Violent. We, you know, we only had some, so many mid-paced bangers. You know, <laughs> things in thrash. How many, What's your thrash? Your fast to mid-paced ratio? Very important. Because if you run one speed or the other too much, it, it starts to lose its impact because the listener basically can get used to it. Yeah, you're you like, oh, well, oh, another song like this. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. You yes. want to have this this variety to the ear that you might not pick up on a conscious level, but it is happening on the... Yeah, or maybe you do. But uh, it's like I always think of it like you got to have it be sort of like a, a roller coaster, but with riffs and tempo changes. <laughs> Not, ah, and then it like levels out a bit and then you go back up and then you know it's it's always got to be changing and like take you on a ride pretty much and i think all the best old records that's something i love about it is that you know the songs differentiate themselves and things are changing up and yet you still are like banging your head the whole time so when you land all that together that's that's the sweet spot you want to be at waking in the nightmares uh I, I don't think i dislike the production a lot what is true is we had to write that whole thing in under two months and recorded it in 12 days. Yeah, that, so uh, yeah, yeah. It was less that the record, that anything was wrong with the record. I think it's a, it's a really great record. I, I like it. Uh, I prefer Waking to the first one myself because I think it shows a lot more proficiency out of the band. War Without Ends really like the demo days. All <laughs> compilation. It really is that because those songs were all written over a few different years. Uh, you can even kind of tell if you listen through it which ones were written when, if, if you know. It basically, the more melodic and speed metal-ish ones, like say "Born of the Ruins," the song, are uh, are like the earlier ones, and then stuff like uh, "At the Crack of Doom," "Combat Shock," "Total War," so, or you know, "Instruments of Torture." Those are like the later written ones um, that were written like between the second demo and the out. The Total War was on the second demo, but you, you get the idea. I always um, looked at it, those albums, the way you pointed out, exactly the same. I always looked at War Without End, almost like Killing Is My Business, to Waking Nightmares being Peace Cells. Like that, in my brain, it made that kind of connection where it, there's a rawness to the first album uh, that is still very endearing, but the second album is just more technical. It's more... Well, it's, it's, it's very simple. Difference between a band that's never been on tour and one that has. Yeah, yeah. So you- go back and undo that though so the first record we couldn't do it again because we couldn't be that band again you can't like unexperience us you know <laughs> yeah yeah it's <laughs> special about it because it's what we were doing before any of that it's like the original mission statement and what you're saying about the how the band saved warbanger i always think look so at one point i was like a 16 year old or whatever who was like iron maiden is the fucking great band ever you know which i still would probably say and uh, <laughs> And I have to not, like, ever disappoint. But also, that same kid was like, St. Anger sucks. Why would they do this, man? It's such yeah, a Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you not heard, like, to live is to die, that middle part? Oh, my God, they were at godhood, and now they're doing this? What the fuck? You know? <laughs> a lot of stuff like that that, you know, you feel when you take. St- and uh, so, for me, I have to, like, every record I put out is, like, answerable to that past version of myself. Would my... 16 year old getting into metal self like think that this sucks or bye honey um it's an important question like i have to like in everything i put out like the kid version of myself who's like a super metal elitist while metal you know that that thing uh is uh you know is standing there with thumb cross judging it you know and i have to be like you know would i past self think this is cool not me who's like Oh, I'm in my 30s and I like relaxing music around the house sometimes. <laughs> Fucking younger, didn't want to hear anything if it didn't have riffs, you know. I hear um, you, man. I'm still like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, you know, it doesn't hurt to be a wider, like a wider 
broader horizoned person but it's like when i do warbringer that's i'm not trying to be like let me show you the whole breadth of everything i am into or no it's like no it's a very specific thing i want it to be that just like, ah, you know well, i think it has to be what you mentioned this you have to have a direction of what you're doing otherwise it becomes very aimless right and you're kind of going all over the place yeah pure purity of essence you know yeah. uh I mean, that's one of the things why people love Rain and Blood so much is because it does exactly one thing. It's just like, here, uh, burning hellfire. Here you go. 28 minutes out. <laughs> you know, <laughs> no, there is nothing else. <laughs> I, wa I want to I let you know, though, I'm going to say this. I've gotten tossed, punched, elbowed uh, in your pits, and I wear those experiences with pride, man. Some of the most fun times I've had in mosh pits, it was always Warbringer. I even got friends who weren't into metal just to join the pits because they had so much fun in there. So uh, awesome. <laughs> I'm really hoping that you guys go from the West to the East Coast when you start touring more and more because I want to go back to a Warbringer mosh pit again, man. There's going to be an East Coast run. Uh, I think it's going to be like early next year. We're kind of splitting it up to West and East Coast so we can go out for like three weeks at a time. It's a lot easier on us than doing like month and a half at a time or something. Yeah. And yeah. Just take a different tour packages, regional, I support acts, all, all that stuff. Uh, but there is, so the, you know, we just did East coast and Midwest with, uh, the Cavalera brothers and man, I was, I was really impressed I by fucking that. miss. I, I was supposed to buy tickets for that, but being just busy with everything else, I missed the tickets for that. Yeah. They, they were great. And they were playing the songs like up to album speed, which is the part I wasn't really expecting. To <laughs> Okay, you know when it comes to <laughs> like, whoa, that's that's up to tempo. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they still have the fire. Yeah, yeah, it's cool because you don't always know, and I think throughout people's lives they can like lose and regain the fire and all of that. You know, it's a journey to. I've not, you know, if you take like different times in my life, I haven't been like equally stoked about my band for the whole time I've been in. How could I be? Yeah, There's yeah. Been, years christ uh i think but, i think i think everybody can relate to that and no matter what they do this there are ups and downs in anything and it's just you have to find again that passion within yourself right yeah yeah and sometimes those ups and downs can just be purely internal too it's not even because anything necessarily changed it's because like oh i've been doing this shit too long one of the one of the ones that's always a challenge for me is i'm always like here this is a i'll get personally something i often think about i'm like okay so so my family kind of still wishes i wasn't in the band i which is crazy at this point <laughs> but they, they wanted me to go and be like a professor or law school you know do some white collar job basically because i had all the resources and the know-how to be able to do that um you know family was doing well all that shit um so i kind of like chucked it <laughs> and went and started <laughs> And, and so they've never been like, you know, they try to be cool about it. But it's just not never what they wanted for me, you know. Yeah. And uh, and then I think I'm like, oh, I, I had this thought like, uh, you know, we put out uh, I, I was actually like tripping a bit when we put out Weapons of Tomorrow. I was kind of like meditating on my life and career so far. And uh, I was thinking, fuck, man. So my band kind of was one of those like one in a million. Oh, we actually made it. We actually did travel the world. We're on album six right now. And then I'm looking at my like apartment where I'm still paying rent and I'm like, not, not good enough. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, that was a cold. That's a, a hard <laughs> pill to follow right there. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Oh yeah. We are one of the most successful bands of our genre of the entire period by which we've been doing music not good enough you know oh it's so hard because you know i'm it's not the first time i'm hearing something like that i i've talked to some veteran bands some new coming bands and you hear that same sentiment from almost everybody and it's so heartbreaking because you know as a fan you always thought like oh they're just musicians that's what they do it's like <laughs> no you have you have lives outside of this you have to work you have to do things you have to learn to find balance between the things I just, I'll have you know that I've been working very hard to go put these kids through college. And by that, I mean my landlord's kids. <laughs> I love I mean, the breadwinner, not just for my family, but for my landlord's family. Too, so <laughs> probably. <you know? laughs> yeah. I have a question for you. I've always wondered this. I, I have a suspicion maybe, but have you ever had any favorite songs that you like to perform? I mean, generally, most all of them. 
yeah. you know, uh, at various times, what have I really liked to do? Um, so go for the older stuff. I always love Combat Shock. Combat Shock has that one riff at the end that works really well as like an end of the show finale because it's got a guitar break and you can get the crowd, you know, we can get a gnarly pick going for that. It was That was the closer for like a decade. Um, so I always love Combat Shock. It's also pretty easy to, for me to play live, to be fair. <laughs> Living Weapon, on the other hand, is a bitch, but I love it. Cause the thing that's a bitch about Living Weapon is you got to do that whole long verse and then say sights all high, and usually by then you're out of breath. So that's the tough one because I fucking I hate it. I'm always like, you know, like I said, the 16-year-old self-judging, uh, you know, crossed arms. Oh, he didn't do the scream. I'm yeah, totally yeah, an yeah, 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 yeah. I'm that asshole. I have to stand my own judgment, you know. <laughs> I I love your scream and growls, like the facial expressions you would make in concerts. It would just get all of us riled up. Uh, and again, to that cool factor of metal that I love so much. I think for me, why I I, I personally thought Warbringer stood out from other thrash metal bands, despite how much I loved the other bands as well. Well, there's a certain character I've been developing, and and that's just like, to be honest, that's like everything I do on stage. I'm actually kind of a clumsy person. You might say I have a a low dex score, you know? (laughs) Um, I, I would always like, basically, I'm just like, when I started performing, I'm like, okay, I guess what I'm doing now is all the shit that I would do, like when I'm stone in my house listening to metal just like air guitar and head banging and like sing you know mouthing along the words and stuff i'm just doing that but i have to just be like totally unembarrassed about it and do it in front of people <laughs> with like actual <laughs> but it's straight up it's the exact same thing uh, uh, I, I, honestly are, I, honestly exact. speaking speaking to you for half an hour i get that feeling it's it's you amplified on stage yeah, you have, you're have you playing a version of yourself. So, you know, I try to be a reasonably nice guy and stuff. And the, the version of me on stage is kind of like a mixture of two things. One is a sort of like psychotic paranoia about the evil in the world, the crazy guy, the back and forth thing. And then the other is I'm having a blast because riffs. And like all that together sort of is what I try to bring to the stage, you know. Um, and, and the, you know, the more I do it, the more I'm kind of just like, grim serious expression like few words all business and i'm really just liking doing it that way and uh you can just see you know just don't need to say anything just play, show up play metal that says it all you know <laughs> well um, you know it's i i i see I've, obviously i haven't seen a bunch of interviews with you but speaking to you now i i see the fire that i i remember seeing the first time i saw you live on stage and it's the same fire that I see now. And I, I want to tell you right away how happy I am that I've gone to interview. Like I, when I started my channel, right away, the bands that I found, like I need to, I want to be able to interview Warbringer one day. And it took a year for me to kind of realize how to do this whole thing. But I got to interview you guys uh, and it was just so much fun. I wanted to leave the whole interview. I always like to do that. I want to leave the last word to you, the man of the hour. Well, hey, yes, if, uh, that's uh, that's really great. I really appreciate, you know, that you feel that way about the records. And uh, it just, it's still, uh, I guess the last word will be this. To anybody else who feels like that out there, anybody who just liked any of our songs once, you know, thank you, really. Because uh, without that, I couldn't be doing this. So the continued existence of Warbringer has, like, as much as it has to do with us and how we were stubborn and persistent and kept working, the only reason, like, the fuel in the tank for that is that people care. That people were like, you, you know, when, when Empire's Collapse happened, the band fell apart, you know, you know collapse. Uh, <laughs> it, people were like, we care. We want to see another Warbringer record. We would hate it if Warbringer broke up now. You guys aren't done, you know. We thought we were. And then on the next two records, the the support and everything, it was like, uh, it felt like being a phoenix or whatever. And so I, I couldn't be here still without that. And it's really the fact, uh, I think the thing that keeps me going is two things. One, that I want to try to see if we can beat what we've done so far. And the moment I don't think that's true anymore, you're going to see me quit and never make a shitty record. That's the goal. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but as long as I think we can do it, we're going to keep going. Um, and then thing two is just like, man, we can't let the fans down because there's people now that feel about my band, I guess, roughly the way I feel about some of my favorite bands. And uh, that's crazy. That's an enormous gift. It really is. Uh, and you can't take that for granted and you can't let these people down. You got to go like 
the reason they even believe in a band like Warbringer is because Warbringer has stood for like serious quality thrash metal done at 110 percent and that's why people care and so it's like it, it validates me and lets me know that I'm doing something right that people say that kind of things and so you know it's it, there's a little explanation of the cliche thing it's all because the fans it really is um i couldn't be me the band couldn't be the band it is without the support of everybody because we we couldn't have even handled it we couldn't have driven ourselves forward uh without the feedback an actual reason to do so so you know we're really grateful for that and that's the thing that you know how did we do this for 17 years because people fucking paid attention to us for that long yeah yeah <laughs> so yeah. it's all <laughs> thanks to them you know it takes a goddamn village <laughs> well i can tell you one thing for sure before uh the interview ends is this next time you guys are in new york look out for a bold five foot seven guy running around in the pit you're gonna know that's gonna be me man because i can't wait to do it once again it's joseph right there all right <laughs> <laughs> thanks a lot man okay man it was great talking to you thanks for the interview <laughs>